this is the last part of the reading by J.B. Minakshi Ma'am. Right. So here we'll be talking about the changes in relative prices. Relative prices of oil, sugar, fruits, vegetable pulses, you know, meat. But when you talk about changes in relative prices, this is relative to cereals. So write it somewhere. We're talking about relative to cereals. So if you look at the prices of oils and sugar, you'll find this that relative to cereals, there has been no increase in the prices of oil and sugar. And one of the reasons could be that uh, the sugar is also made available through the public distribution system. Uh, so in even in case of the prices have increased, the availability has not decreased, right? Secondly, uh, through the PDS route, in some states, even oil is given. For example, Andhra Pradesh and uh, Tamil Nadu. Right. So I'll write a few points. Please write alongside. So relative to cereals. No increase in the price of oil and sugar. Well, one of the reasons could be that uh, it is uh, made available through PDS. And in some states, even oil is made available through PDS. For example, EP, Tamil Nadu. And uh, <clears throat> what they have also found is that uh, she's talked about few elasticity estimates, your income elasticity, elasticity estimates. And what she found was that uh, the income is the main driver of the consumption of uh, oil and sugar. Right. So even if the relative prices of oil and sugar would have increased, there is an increase in it, in the consumption of that. So please write from elasticity estimates. That income is likely to be the major driver of the consumption of, uh, of oil and sugar. Even if the prices of oil and sugar would have increased, <clears throat> then also uh, the consumption would have still increased. It's found that income is likely to be. the major driver you know, fats, consumption of fats, oils, sugar. Okay. So there has not been much increase in the price of oil and sugar, but even if they would have increased, she's saying that consumption would have still increased. Even if the relative price of oil and sugar would have increased,
consumption may still have increased. Consumption may still have increased, one thing. Second thing is that uh, if you look at the prices of fruits, vegetables, and meat, right, you will find this that uh, uh, the, the, the prices of fruits, vegetable, meat, etc., all of these, they have increased for all income groups. So there has been the relative, there has been the increase in the relative price of fruits, vegetable, pulses, etc., across all income groups, right? So relative prices. Here, oil and sugar, they have not increased relative to cereals. But these things have, their prices have increased relative to cereals. Prices have increased across all income groups. But uh, the changes in the relative price, it seems uh, more pronounced for the poorest side, the initial 33% uh, of the population. And for the richest side, it doesn't seem that important. So please write. But a relative price change appear to be greater or worst side than for the richest. So she says this, that if you look at the data <clears throat> between uh, and 2011-12, <clears throat> For poorest side, the relative price increase have been um, around 50% for these commodities, your fruits, vegetables, pulses, dairy, meat, etc. For richest side, is around 20%, right? Okay. Now, in this part, she is talking about the potential role of the diet quality in mitigating the effects of undernutrition and uh, and overnutrition. So she says this that uh, in case if you look at the relationship between the share of calories, instead of using the uh, just the share of uh, share of non cereals and undernutrition, she has gone deeper. And she talks about the relationship between the share of calories uh, from fruits, vegetable, pulses, and the measures of undernutrition. So the measures of undernutrition could be what? The measures of undernutrition are uh, uh, the prevalence of thin women and stunting. So both of them have the negative relationship. So whether it is uh, uh, prevalence of uh, thin women, and stunting, you find this that as the energy share of calories from fruits, vegetable, pulses, etc., this is going to increase, then the percentage of thin women is going to fall. Percentage of stunting is going to fall. So there is a negative relationship. There is a negative relationship with this. Okay. 
Similarly, there is also the negative relationship between the share of calories from diet, from dairy, meat, eggs, and the prevalence of thin women and the prevalence of stunting. So there is a negative relationship there also. There is a negative relationship here also. But what you find is that the relationship is much flatter here. You're getting, I mean, don't draw this. I mean, for example, you have uh, like this. You have like this. So you have stunted children. Stunted children on this and the share of energy from dairy, meat, eggs, etc. So this, this is somewhat like this. It's almost flat. That is the point. So this is this is negative, but it is almost flat. Here you still find that there is some slope. This is a negative slope. You can still find that. So if I say it like this, or if I say like this, yes, this is this is negative, but it has a very flat slope. So like this, one thing. For anemia also, you find this the same thing. That is. Uh, that is the percentage of uh, or, the, or the prevalence of anemia is going to decrease in case if the share of uh, fruits, vegetable pulses is going to increase, share of uh, your dairy, meat, eggs, that is going to increase. So there is a negative relationship there also. Hmm. And then, she's, then she says that there is the another aspect of Overnutrition. Uh, there's the another aspect of malnutrition, which is overnutrition. So, when the share of calories from oil, sugar, etc., is going to increase, right? Then the, um, the the percentage of women with diabetes that is going to increase. Uh, the percentage of overweight women is going to increase. That is that is the point, right? Or women with BMI. Greater than 25, that is going to increase. So there is a positive relationship. Uh, so positive relationship. One thing. And this positive relationship, this relationship between the share of calories from oil, sugar, etc. and the percentage of women with diabetes, percentage of women with BMI greater than 25. This is not only positive, this is even more responsive as compared to the undernutrition. Means this is going to affect, uh, this, will, this will have a greater slope as compared to this. So if I draw it, it will somewhat look like this. So, I mean, this has a good slope, right? So you will write one more line here that uh, the more responsive, indicators of overnutrition. So what are the indicators of overnutrition? Percentage of women uh, with BMI greater than 25. Percentage of women with diabetes, right? Overnutrition are far more responsive. of worsening of diet quality worsening of diet quality uh, then the indicators of undernutrition Then the indicators of undernutrition. Right, Vida? Okay, so this is uh, what I wanted to do in this uh, recording. And this is the last part of this reading. So we'll start with a new reading in the next class. Maybe inequality or the poverty line uh, reading will start. Right? Chalil, thank you very much.